SwiftUI gives us a number of valuable ways of controlling the alignment of our views. I wanna walk you through each of them so you can see them in action. Now the simplest option is to use the alignment parameter when we give a frame modifier to a view. And remember, a text view like this one here will always use the exact size of its text as its frame. We added padding around it so it's bigger, but without that, it would be snugly fit against the text itself. Hello world, with a bit of alignment uh, allowance for line height and similar. Um, but if you place a frame around that, then the, the parent frame doesn't have a say on the final size of the child. This child gets to say, I want to be X and Y in size, and the frame has to accept that. It poses a size, but accepts the child's request. And so if we said to this text thing here, you have, uh, let's do a slightly longer bit of text perhaps, uh, let's do live long and prosper, then the frame with a width of 300, height of 300 here, you're gonna see it just has this huge frame around here, but the text itself is still sort of sitting in the middle by itself. So it allows us a little bit of space for itself, the exact X, Y for its text, and it's centered inside the larger frame. Now, if you don't want the text to be centered, you can use an alignment parameter when you make this frame modifier here. For example, we could say there's an alignment here of dot top leading. And I'll put it into the top left corner of, on my screen in left to right language uh, of the box like this. And if you want, you can then say, I want to offset uh, something around there like X 50, Y 50, for example, move the whole thing around inside that box. The next option is to use the alignment parameter of a stack. So we could say that I want to have multiple words inside a single HStack. So I'll do HStack here with text live in a font of caption, then text long, then text and in a font of title perhaps, and then text prosper in a font of large title, like that. And we haven't specified an alignment there, and so they'll be centered inside the HStack. You can see there, they're all positioned in the middle of the Z stack, uh, the HStack, sorry. That's the default behavior of HStack here. It doesn't look great, and so you might think to align them all to one edge uh, by giving an alignment to the HStack, like this. I get a neat line by doing alignment uh, dot bottom. And it's still pretty bad. As you can see, if I choose the HStack again, you can see what's actually happening here. Um, it's still pretty bad, right? Because um, SwiftUI understands the concept of like writing some text on a line. It understands that some letters, in this case, the P and the G, have what we call descenders. They go below the line. If you think about characters like A, B, C, D, E, they all rest on the line you're writing on, whereas other letters like uh, G or J or P or Y, they have a descender and they should sit below the line. When we say bottom alignment, the bottom of the text will be placed in the bottom of the H stack. That's what we're asking for here it won't think about descenders. And so it sits in this very strange way where the bottom of the G sits next to the line, the bottom of the P sits next to the line as well, as opposed to below the line. Uh, now, helpfully, SwiftUI has two special alignments that will align uh, the baseline. It'll think about the baseline of this, at the bottom of the curve and the P and the R and OS like this, excluding the descender. Um, and we can align based on that baseline, either for the first child or the last child. So we could say, actually, I want to align based on the prosper by doing dot last text baseline. And now uh, they're all in the box still, which is great. But if you sort of see the live and long and and all sit on the same line of the bottom of the O in prosper, they all sit on that line now. So it looks better in uh, a regular layout, which is great. So we now have the stack alignment being used rather than frame alignment. Moving on, we can actually customize what alignment even means for each individual view. Now, to get a good example of how this works, I wanna delete this and have something else instead. Let's say we have a VStack with alignment, uh, alignment of leading, 
with text, hello world, and then text. This is a longer line of text with a background of red and a frame width of 400, height of 400, and then a background of blue. So we should see that, okay? So our V stack sits neatly around its two text views here, um, which have different lengths inside it. Hello world and long live text have different lengths inside it. Then uh, there's a background so you can see it more clearly on the screen. We've used the leading alignment. And so both these two views will align to the left hand edge in my preview here in this left to right environment. Um, outside of that is the frame modifier, give you a nice 400 by 400 space with a blue background. So it'll, it'll be much, much bigger than the red space, but it'll center the red thing in, this, in the middle because it hasn't got otherwise been used correctly. So it's centered neatly like that. Now, when this V stack comes to aligning each of these two text views, it asks them, please provide for me your leading edge, whatever leading means to you. And by default, this is obvious. It'll use either the left edge or the right edge of the view depending on the user's system language. So for me, it's English, it'll be the left edge of H and the T, that is our leading edge. But what if we want to change that? What if we want to say, actually, one of these views has a custom alignment, a custom leading edge, and SwiftUI provides us with a modifier called alignment guide just for this purpose. And this takes two parameters. One is the guide we want to try and change, and the other one is a closure that returns a new alignment somehow how we want to handle leading, for example. And this closure is given a view dimension object that contains the width and height of the view along with the ability to read its various edges. So we can adjust it proportionally if we need to. Now by default, the leading uh, alignment for a guide is, uh, the leading alignment guide, sorry, is its leading edge. That's what it is, right? It's, it's not complicated here. Um, the, the, the leading alignment guide for a view is its leading alignment guide. It's the left edge of the view, right? Um, that's what it means by default. It should be obvious, but there you go. What's actually happening here is this. We say text hello world, alignment guide dot leading. Give me uh, the dimensions coming in. We're basically saying when you ask for the leading alignment guide, return the dimensions with the leading alignment guide. That's the default, and it's obvious. The leading alignment guide, use the leading alignment guide. Trailing, use a trailing. Da -da -da -da. Of course you do, that makes absolute sense. We could now rewrite that. We could say, when you want the leading alignment guide, actually send back what was the trailing alignment guide instead. Flip things around, and now, what we're saying is, you can sort of see why I added colors at this point more clearly. You can see this first text view, hello world, if I zoom in just fractionally here, this one here uh, will move to the left like this. So its right edge sits above the left edge of this long line of text. And the VSAT will automatically expand to contain it. And of course the whole thing will still be remaining uh, centered. This is different from just saying offset. If you did an offset with like minus 100 or whatever, you could do that, but that's a different result because um, the, what happens when you use an offset is its original dimensions, its position and, and size, don't actually change. Even though the resulting view is rendered somewhere else, SwiftUI considers it to be where it originally was. And if we'd offset the hello world view, we'd set something like uh, here, I want uh, offset, x minus 100 y zero you're going to see it it no longer expands the v stack because it still considers the view to be this blue space here it's being rendered somewhere else but the view itself is still here so the v stack does not expand so it makes a different result a different result now um we're given this alignment guide modifier here and it'll pass in uh the dimensions you want to work with you don't have to use them. You don't have to say, I want to use trailing for leading whenever you want to. You can send back a hard coded number or create some other calculation, however you need to. For example, we could make a, a, a tiered effect. We could say, let's scrap some stuff here. Um, a tiered effect where we have 10 views 
by multiplying each position by minus 10. So it makes this diagonal line. We could say if we set a line leaning, then for each, for each 0 to 10 with a position coming in. And then do text. Oh, all right, I need that open brace. Thank you, like that. There we go. Then do text number position, like that. Straight line, as you expect. But for the alignment guide, alignment guide of leading, I want to do ignore the metrics coming in. I don't care. Let's use our position times by minus 10. We use that for its guide. Now it'll be angry here. We're going to make this thing a double, but that's fine because it's integer by default. Use that and boom, it now makes each of their alignment guides increasingly uh, different values of numbers, making this tiered effect. Of course, the VSAT will expand to contain it. So we've, we've customized what the idea of a leading edge actually means for that view, which is really, really nice. Now for complete control of your alignment guides, you need to create a custom alignment guide. A leading is not enough and more. And that, I think, deserves a mini video all of its own.